In this video, I'm going to help you discover UWB's signal at the physical layer. Let's start by looking at the standards defining UWB. UWB is an impulse radio technology, and its phi and MAC layers were originally defined in the IEEE 802.15.4a standard. More recently, the 802.15.4z amendment has focused on enhancements to increase the accuracy and security of UWB for ranging measurements. UWB is different from narrowband communications technologies such as Wi-Fi or Bluetooth because it uses an impulse radio technology. The UWB pulse is very short, about two nanoseconds. And UWB transmission is achieved by sending these pulses in sequences. The pulse repetition frequency can range from tens to hundreds of megahertz. UWB data is transmitted in a frame composed of several fields, including synchronization, header, and payload fields. UWB's distance measurement is based on time of flight, and this mechanism requires the receiver to precisely measure the signal's reception time. The UWB's ultra-short time domain pulse has much faster rising and falling ages than standard narrowband signals, and therefore enable for finer timing resolution at the receiver. In indoor operation, the signal can take multiple paths. The direct line of sight is the shortest path, but signal reflections come from the environment, like walls, ceilings, um, furniture, and these reflections captured at the receiver may overlap with the first path. But um, thanks to UWB's short pulse duration, it remains possible to distinguish the direct shortest path and hence have the accurate time measurement. The short time domain pulses translate in the frequency domain into ultra-wideband spectrum. UWB operates on a channel size of 500 megahertz, which is much larger spectrum than um, technologies such as Wi-Fi, narrowband technologies such as Wi-Fi. Since the RF energy is spread over such a large spectrum, UWB signal can be designed to look like imperceptible random noise to conventional narrowband receivers. And because UWB operates at low emission limits, uh, for example, the FCC mandates a maximum uh, per spectral density of minus 41.3 dBm per megahertz, which is an order of magnitude lower than typical short range uh, radio um, such as Bluetooth. And therefore it allows UWB technology to coexist uh, with existing communications technology without causing interference. The UWB standard defines operation on a spectrum from 500 megahertz to uh, 13 gigahertz. But the FIRA consortium supports only the band group two, 500 megahertz channels numbered five to 14, with center frequencies from 6.4 to 9.9 .9 gigahertz. Channel 9, with center frequency at 7.9 GHz, is the only uh, mandatory channel as it offers the greatest worldwide regulatory acceptance. As we saw, UWB's pulse technology allows to determine the distance between peer devices with a very high degree of accuracy and with resilience to real-world multipass environments and its broad spectrum and low power footprint 
makes it easy to coexist with other wireless technologies operating in the same spectrum. Thank you for listening. I hope that this video was informative and make sure to take a look at uh, our other Fira Presents videos. Thank you.